Welcome to a GORCOM via satellite, a production with GORCOM, in which we speak with executives of small cap companies that are demonstrating business excellence. With us today, I'm happy to have, for the first time, Matt Willer. He's VP of Sales and Marketing at Xylitol Canada. This company trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the stock symbol XYL. And for our friends in the U.S., XYLTF, you can find them at xylitolcanada.com or get to a GORCOM and look up Xylitol. Now, for those of you who are new to the company, Xylitol is a fast-growing natural sweetener company. And we know what that means because we've seen the headlines coming out of places like New York that started to ban high-sugar substances. They manufacture 100% North American-derived Xylitol products. More than just lip service, $3.9 million in revenue so far in the first three quarters of this fiscal year. That's up 52%. And for the, the third quarter itself, revenues were up 85%. Customers include Loblaws, Whole Foods, and Costco. Matt, welcome to the show. George, uh, thanks for having us. We're really excited. All right, so I got a lot to talk to you about because anytime I see a great revenue generating company that's got real products, real customers, real revenues, I want to dive into that. But before we can get that far, you got to explain, give us, take 30 seconds to explain to everybody what is Xylitol because until you and I met, I hadn't heard of it before but I'm glad I did. Yeah, sure, George. Uh, probably the first uh, explanation that we give just about everyone, whether that's a customer, a, a, a retailer, uh, or in this case, potential investors. Uh, xylitol is actually an all-natural sugarless sweetener uh, discovered in the late 1800s in Finland, uh, and it is a one-to-one -one replacement for table sugar, but it has a a catalog of health benefits. So, uh, been around for well over 100 years, completely natural, derived from hardwood trees, uh, and the benefits include, you know, about half as many calories as sugar, 75% fewer carbohydrates, uh, suitable for diabetics, low glycemic, and the list goes on. So, in this day and age, with everyone concerned about sugar and artificial sweeteners, xylitol is a great natural alternative. All right, so let's talk about the competitive landscape first. Uh, naturally, you know, we all go to cafes, restaurants. We see the artificial sweeteners on the tables. You, you'll, you'll see Splenda and Sweet and Low. How do you size up versus those, product, product versus product? Uh, another good question and something that more and more people are focusing on here in the, in the past couple of years. But you have, uh, for lack of a better term, you have a spectrum in the sweetener market. So on one side are the artificial or chemical sweeteners that you mentioned. Uh, those would be the sweet and lows, the sucralose or splendas, the sugar twin. Um, these became popular in the 80s as people started to look for diet or light or calorie-free type products. Um, but at the end of the day, they're synthesized, right? They're, uh, they're chemical sweeteners. On the other side of that sweetener spectrum is refined sugar and high fructose corn syrup. Obviously been around for hundreds of years. Unfortunately, it's made its way into just about every consumer packaged good with or without the consumer's knowledge. Uh, and so what's emerged over the last four or five years is this blossoming space in between those two sweetener sets, and that's natural sugar alternatives. And so within that space, um, that's where xylitol squarely plays. Now, that's a really tough space to be in. But having said that, no one can ignore the fact that you've now signed on key customers. Uh, I mentioned earlier Loblaws, Whole Foods, uh, Costco. How were you able to convince these companies to carry your products? And then I'll, we'll move into your business uh, execution success from there. But how were you able to get key customers like that to, to start carrying your products? I, I mean, the answer to that is probably one of the most validating components of our story because I can assure you, having been in the business for 15 years, I, I've talked to Costco, I've talked to uh, Whole Foods uh, for many, many, many years, and, and they said no. Uh, that was kind of the uh, the generic response uh, going back seven to ten years. Uh, the reason that they're saying yes, the reason that they're embracing us, is that the market is no longer just a high-end, spendy retail consumer. The everyday mom, the everyday consumer, is walking into mainstream grocery stores and saying, "Hey, listen, I uh, I've seen it on the news. I've seen it on 60 Minutes. I've seen it uh, on National Geographic." Sugar is not good for me, and either is the chemical alternative. We demand a natural sweetener, a natural sugar alternative. And so that message has resonated from the consumer on up. 
and it's no longer just a health food store type product. What happens in, in the retail space is Loblaws and Costco and Whole Foods only need to hear that for so long before they wrap their arms around the fact that their everyday customers asking for it. And so as much as I'd like to credit myself or the, or the company uh, for making some of these inroads, and certainly we did have some influence, until the buyers at those large retailers realize that there's going to be traction, uh, they're not interested. And so I think that's a testimony to where the market is right now, that, that the, some of the largest retailers in the world um, have not only embraced it conceptually, but have it on their shelves. Yeah, and being in the space myself for all these years, uh, client or not, I've seen a lot of small companies who claim in the tech business, the food business, all sorts of businesses that they've got something great and revolutionary. But I always say, you know, we all believe we've got the most beautiful baby in the pageant. Who, who are the third-party people that are validating that? And when, when you've got Loblaws, Whole Foods, and Costco now buying your products, I call that commercial acceptance. So now you're at the commercial acceptance stage. You've broken down the door. Congratulations. Where do you see the growth opportunities? Because it's important for people at home to understand you're not just, you know, uh, you're not just a natural sweetener in a bag to put in your coffee or cakes or whatever you want to put it in. You've also got some actual products that you're producing. So where do you see the growth for Xylitol coming over the next five years? Another good question, and there's there's three answers to it, with two being more important than the uh, than the initial one. The the easy answer is you, you get more stores. Um, that's the obvious. But the the real levers that we're focused on is uh, addressable doors. And what I'd say about that is that you know Loblaws we happen to be in nationwide, but take Costco for an example. We do a great business with Costco, but we're only in 7% of their locations. Uh, so addressable doors means a customer that we've made inroads with, maybe they're uh, having regional success with the product. Now, how do we get in the other 93% of the doors? Well, I can assure you that it's a lot easier now that we're an existing uh, vendor and supplier to Costco than it would be uh, if we were still on the doorstep. So addressable doors with our existing client base is probably one of the most, uh, p the paths of least resistance. These, these are happy, uh, happy customers. They've had good commercial success with the item at retail. Um, expansion within their store portfolio is obvious. But going to... Uh, to the product portfolio, which you uh, alluded to, there's another lever altogether. Right now, uh, let's use Costco again as an example. Uh, we have one item in 7% of the stores. Okay, well, we've already said, how do we get into the other 93%? That's lever one. Lever two is SKU, SKU expansion. So instead of one item, we have three. Three becomes five, right. five becomes 10. And so now that addressable door that today was 7% uh, of a large chain with one item, becomes 50, 75 percent, 100 percent of the of the locations with two, three, four, five, and six items, and so that door becomes worth seven dollars when it used to be worth one, and now you have ten times as many doors. So it's somewhat of an exponential component uh, type effect, uh, and it's not just lip service. I mean, this is exactly how we've grown to this day. Like I mentioned, we're actually in Loblaws uh, across Canada. Uh, but again with one item so still a lot of room for expansion there but it's an illustration that um, we can take it from you know test market entry into a small region uh, and then extrapolate that out into into full retail expansion throughout the entire chain and some of the products that I've seen by going to your website you've got ketchup you've got honey you've got jams you've got uh, you've got uh, um, uh, gum and things like that so you've got a pretty wide base of products that will appeal to the masses if and when you can lever up the number of SKUs at these at these customers, very much the case. And I mean, the the underlying theme and the common denominator for that product portfolio is what we've done is we've taken products that historically are sweetened with a with just a ton of sugar or high fructose corn syrup. So you mentioned the sauces and the jams. Uh, you mentioned candies, gums, mints. You know, uh, historically these items are either littered with sugar or the sugar-free alternative would be uh, using an aspartame or a sucralose or an artificial sweetener. So we've been able to create an entire catalog that is 100% natural but also 100% sugar-free. So we're not only catering to the health-conscious consumer, we're suitable for diabetics. We're suitable for people on uh, a variety of different diets that focus on natural and low-carb and low-glycemic. So. Our product portfolio resonates uh, with a wide, wide audience, and I think that's one of the, the reasons you've seen the high degree of commercial acceptance that we have over the last two or three years.
All right, so devil's advocate, can you scale? Let's say, you know, they always say be careful what you wish for, right? Mm -hmm. Can you scale? Let's say you get both levers or one of those two levers. Either you get more locations out of Costco or you get the same locations, but now you're putting in six or seven products into it. So mm -hmm. either way, you've levered up. Can yeah. your operations scale? What what are your what's your operations like? What are your operations like today? And what are you guys planning on doing? Uh, so I mean, you're you're exactly right. I mean, there's there has to be a measured approach to any aggressive growth company um, in, in the space. Not not even our space, but anyone that's starting from uh, someone insignificant in revenue run rate and then you know putting themselves on the path to a hundred million dollar year business, say four to five years out. Well, expansion internally we have done. We, uh, when I first joined the company in late 2010, we were in 15,000 square feet of manufacturing and distribution space uh, down here in Denver, Colorado. Uh, since then, uh, we've acquired uh, two additional adjoining warehouses. We're now in 50,000 square feet. So that's just kind of the, the tangible expansion that we've uh, done internally to accommodate some of the, the growth and the requirements from the customer. But I will say one of the most gratifying things and certainly it helps us manage our business is that in as much as we want to be measured and calculated with our approach so that we don't do too much too fast and spread ourselves thin, customers like Costco and Loblaws do not want to see us spread ourselves too thin because at the end of the day if we cannot supply them they've done a disservice to their customer sure. uh, and and that's the last thing that they want so to that end uh, they are very very open books these larger customers are very open books with us working with us on quarterly and even annual forecasts okay so that's giving us visibility into future demand future expansion plans appetite for new products and when uh, and so we're looking right now at opportunities that are six and 12 months out and making the preparations today so that we can support that volume, uh, you know, half a year from now. And so we do really treat these as partnerships and, and so do they. So it's a, it's a two way street that allows us to uh, invest wisely. And before I get to my last question, um, I do want to mention to everyone at home too that, and we never, we don't talk about, uh, the stock price or anything like that, so we don't, we don't, we're not here to give any kind of investment advice, but it, it, it behooves us to at least mention the fact that you know, Dundee Corp owns approximately 30% uh, of your of your company, and, uh, and about half of that came by way of a convertible debenture that they converted into equity at 24 cents uh, just in the, in the last quarter or so. So how does it feel to have uh, the support of something like Dundee, Dundee Corp uh, behind you? Well, I mean, admittedly, it feels fantastic. Uh, you've got uh, someone that believes in the company that's historically a long-term investor uh, that has a war chest of capital. Uh, so, you know, you really couldn't hope for a better partner in terms of uh, uh, the requirements that may or may not be needed with a long-term expanding company. Uh, also, the long-term approach, you know, is not unique to Dundee. We have a couple other large holders on an institutional type scale, one of which is the founder. Uh, and between the three of them, uh, they are all long-term holders, and, and no one's ever stole a share. In fact, we uh, we've treated this company in the right way, almost as if it was private for the last three years. We we got together uh, in early in 2011. We said we're we're going to build the business first, and you know the equity appreciation or even telling the story that's secondary. That'll come with building a good business. And so it's only uh, recently that we've started telling our story. Uh, we felt that it merited. Uh, uh, a little bit of highlight since we have hit some uh, benchmarks and key customers. But at the end of the day, our focus is first and foremost to build the brand, to build the business, and Dundee and others recognize that, and that's why they've not only put their money where their mouth is, um, but you know they they converted that uh, that debt into equity uh, within 30 or 60 days of uh, of the convertible being put into play. So I think that's a third party testimony to uh, how they feel about our business and the long term opportunities there. Well, and that's a perfect segue into my last question. So you're VP of sales and marketing. Uh, sales year-to-date are up 52%. The quarter, the third quarter itself was 85%. Is that kind of growth uh, on a business, on the business side sustainable in the near and in the in long-term, near and immediate-term future? Uh, the, medium the, term answer, future. the answer is yes, um, but let me just point out a couple things so that there's some uh, visibility in terms of how our business does work. Um, since... The primary lines of products that we sell are sweeteners. Uh, sweeteners are used as a sugar replacement, and uh, one of the main things is baking. And so you do see some uh, seasonal 
uh, heightened sales on a seasonal basis as you get into that kind of holiday season, the Canadian and U.S. Thanksgiving, uh, and certainly Christmas time. Uh, so that third quarter um, growth uh, may have had some uh, some growth that you could attribute to retailers getting uh, ready for the holiday season. Certainly the fourth quarter is always our, our biggest. Uh, you can look year over year and you'll see that. It's not going to be unique to this year. Um, but then on an annual basis, I think that you, you're going to see that growth not only be sustainable but possibly be uh, exceeded, and I'll tell you why. Um, right now we're looking historically at a young company. Uh, we've only been public for a little over three years and, and frankly, in business, a little over three years. And customers that contribute to that revenue stream like the Loblaws and the Costcos, the Whole Foods, they don't jump on board just because you walked in in 2011 and said, hey, I got this great mm -hmm. product. Um, so, so what you're seeing now is you're seeing traction at the larger retailers, and now you have your foot in the door. And so the time to execute is uh, – is dramatically minimized because that sales cycle and lead time is no longer there. Um, so you hit what, for lack of a better term, you hit what, what I'll consider a critical mass. Um, and it's much easier to get, say, from a $4 million a year run rate to $10 million than it is from zero to four. Right. Uh, and just as right. easily from there, 10 to 20 is easier than four to 10. So you truly do have that snowball effect. So I think that people can expect those growth rates to continue um, for the foreseeable future, for sure. Well, there's a reason they say your first million is the hardest million. So uh, I know I, I know how it is to operate a business. Once you get up to that uh, that you know four million dollars in three quarters that you've done just Q1 to Q3, yeah, it definitely gets a little bit easier at that point because the doors are open and away you go. Matt, thanks for joining us. Looking forward. This is just the beginning uh, of having you here. Uh, we've just started off with you and looking forward to having many, many more of these. As, uh, as you achieve more and more business milestones uh, over the next 12 months. Well, George, we look forward to it as well. Uh, thanks for having us today, and uh, we'll look forward to reporting back on our successes in the future. You've been watching Matt Willer. He's VP of Sales and Marketing at Xylitol Canada. The company trades on the stock symbol XYL on the TSX Venture Exchange, and for our friends in the U.S., XYLTF. You can find them at xylitolcanada.com. That's X Y L. ITOL Canada, xylitolcanada.com, or get over to Gorecom, punch in their stock symbol, get to the Xylitol Hub, find great information like these webcasts and other great interviews and, uh, and things in the future. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.